And good morning people, welcome back to Might and Magic 10 Legacy. Little bit of an extra part, because I'm actually curious... Well... On how much of an, an improvement would Grandmaster and the increased... And, and the promotions really give me. I actually have their monsters now. Now, so I'm able to share them. And you might be a bit surprised in how much they actually do for you. For the basis, uh, basis of this um, actual experiment, I am at the end of the game after I've just faced Adira and this is before I actually went out and got the promotions this is my current equipment and this is what I will be basing everything on if I am to gain any levels which I don't luckily but even if I did I would not then be able to distribute them points just you know, change my equipment in any way I do have all this unidentified equipment none of it matters what matters is what I have currently have equipped, what my current stats are, what my current uh, things are. The only things that will be changing is I will have the promotions, so I will have a Paladin, a Warden, a Pathfinder and a Marauder. And I will have any Grandmasters that are available. I will also have this Endurance as well. So, any any levels, uh, any current training that I can do, I will go and do. So I will have like Grandmaster for Shayla, Endurance Master as well. I will have Dagger Grandmaster for Tina, and Mysticism Expert, Axe Grandmaster for Iris, and Fire Magic Master. And Ray will have Spear Master, no sorry, Spear Grandmaster, Endurance Grandmaster, Arcane Discipline Grandmaster. Those are the only things that are going to change. Equipment wise, I will be exactly the same. So, stat, uh, stat wise, this is the current thing. I already have these written down, so this is currently what I am uh, bring into the table at this current stage so that is Shayla Tina also well these light wards and stuff will be gone as well by that point so the light uh, the light wards will be changed um, the light resistance will be changed a little bit more uh, Shayla will be 86, Tina will be 88, Iris, who's up on the screen now, will be 63, or something like that. Wait, how are you 85 and I have... Okay, I'm a bit confused there. Does it only accept the... I'm actually interested now. Uh, because I should have 83 on Ray and that's plus 22. So these don't actually stack. Interesting. Okay, so we've learned something new already. So these two do not actually stack. You just have the best, uh, biggest uh, amount, which would be the one I got from Shayla. Okay, learning things even after the game. So yeah, uh, so there is Ray as well. Strangely has a higher magic score than Iris. Anyways, uh, let's go and uh, load in my LP ad. Because this actually is after the fact so 
So here I am, well, similar place, just outside the death match. But uh, I did identify all this equipment. None of it has been equipped. And my equipment is all the same. I just have all the promotions. Light Master, Endurance. No, sorry, Light Grandmaster, Endurance Master, Dagger Grandmaster. I didn't actually get Mr. Sill. Oh, okay, I thought I did. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. It's only an additional few MP. It doesn't change too much. Axe Grandmaster, Fire Master, Spear, Endurance, Arcane Discipline, Grandmastered. So how much did it actually really change? I'm actually going to start with Ray here. Before she had 353 hit points. You can see the change there. Uh, she's gained 46 from Endurance Grandmaster. Hit points no, it was never really a, her problem though. She always had a lot. Stat-wise, uh, the base stats, they did not get changed by the promotion. They, do, they, they just don't. They just get a new name and some new abilities. That is it. So she's an Orc Marauder now instead of an Orc Hunter. Was it? I think, it, yeah, Hunter. Marauder granted her the ability to actually go and get the Grandmaster for some additional things. Her attack power before was 192 to 479. So she's got Grandmaster Spear. How much do you think it's gone up by? You might be surprised. 240 to 541. It is not a big increase at all. That is actually the only change, really. And so it's gone up by 48, uh, 48 as, as a minimum to 62 at a maximum. So you might be thinking, wait, that can't be right. I've just gained a Grand Master skill. Why is it not really that effective? The skill weight itself, your damage with spears is increased by an additional 3% for each skill level. 3% multiplied by the 43 that I did there, uh, that I, I have, is 120, uh, yeah, 129. 129% extra. No, that, yeah, that is right. So you're thinking, wait, 129%. That is not what should is really looking at there. And you're right, it isn't, is it? That's because the calculation isn't based off of this damage score. It's based off of this. And even that doesn't really um, match up a whole lot. So where are things changing? Why am I not getting as much damage as I thought I might be? It all comes down to the way damage is calculated. Um, damage is calculated on a number of factors. You have your base damage, which is the 
sphere itself. So for my calculations, I've done the eight, 87 max because this is the max amount of damage she's going to do. This is what I want I to be looking at for. How does it reach to 541? So the, uh, the calculation is your might score. Currently I have 72, uh, 79. You multiply that by 2 and you have the amount of percent, uh, percentage that might increases your melee damage. So that puts that up to 158% extra. You then go with your spe uh, the spear skill or the, your weapon skill. Currently I have 43. Naturally that gets increased by 5% plus an additional 3%. So that is being increased by 8% percent per level so the total is 344 percent so if we add them together the 100 percent base plus 158 percent plus two, uh, 344 percent we reach 602 percent of base that is 602 percent of 87 which equals 523.74 bit low we then add the additional 17 that is included in the damage but it is a flat, a flat damage at the end which equals 540.74 that is where we've got our score. You can uh, do the same for the minimum amount of damage, and you will re uh, so 37 will reach 240. I didn't actually do the calculation, but it'll be rounded to this number. So that is why we're not actually getting a whole lot of extra damage because it isn't based on what I currently have, it's based on the entire calculation. Mm. True, this is twice still, so I am still hitting fairly hard. I'll be hitting, what, um, in the 800s with criticals now. Maybe even get a couple of 900s if I'm really lucky. But I haven't really scratched the thousand mark, I feel. But that is... So when I actually saw this, I was actually a little bit disappointed that it didn't go up by that much. And that's what got me into thinking, why did it not? And that's where I went into... Wait, what's the actual calculation for this? I love maths as a subject, so just going out and finding out that how this spear was doing this much damage was actually a nice little challenge for me as well. But Ray has always been my hardest hitter, uh, you can't really deny that fact. I was just a little bit disappointed that it didn't increase her up by that much. Iris, again, her equipment has not changed. What do you want? Her, get my notes, uh, her attack damage was, uh, at least on her main hand, 110 to 176. That's gone up to 132 to 214. And her rough hand was 98 to 149, is now 121 to 189. Again, there's not a whole lot of increase. And if we go to the thing, hers is exactly the same. 
you actually do the same calculation as I did with Ray just a moment ago for Iris' main hand weapon. Uh, if I go to it correctly, there we go. So that calculation is pretty much based on the calculation I did at the same time uh, with Ray. Her offhand, however, and this one threw me for a very long while, is not actually the same calculation. It's similar, but it's not the same. Dual wield. Your damage with a melee weapon in your offhand is increased by 0.4 for each point of might. If that was the case, and the normal calculation was true, this number would be larger than the main hand, because you've got additional might. Uh, additional damage based on the might. So where does it change? And the answer was actually very simple, and I missed it for a, quite a while. The might score on your offhand weapon does not exist. At least the initial one. So, instead of having, so for your main hand it was base might times 2, skill times 8. For the offhand, it's the base and the skill times 8. And then you add the offhand skill, which is 0 0.4 times your might. The strange thing is, even though it doesn't say it, you actually have to do that twice. So it's actually 0 0.8 times uh, your might added to the skill level hand, the skill percentage added to the base. It is actually quite a bit confusing because it doesn't actually say the calculation. I'm going to put it up on screen somewhere around here, I think, if I can. Uh, to just show what the calculations are uh, or it is for the offhand because as far as I've seen no one actually has written it down anywhere which is a bit odd but yeah you have to do the 0 0.4 twice because it's on t because you get it for it being in the offhand as also for dual wielding it's a bit of confusion there. Tina. Her one her attack damage didn't actually change. She has exactly the same attack damage as when she didn't have Grandmaster. And this is one of the reasons why I feel Tina actually has the best version of Grandmaster. Because her one gives you an additional strike for each equipped dagger. Why are you in such a rush? So instead of having uh, the normal attack plus one here, plus one for Relentless, I've got four attacks with the Grandmaster. So she was basically you know, she basically gained another 63 to 99 with her grandmaster which is on a comparable level and actually slightly higher than what ray and iris gained and the same with her offhand instead of two attacks she's now got three so she gains 51 to 79 if you add them two together she actually gains quite a bit of uh, damage if they hit. So I actually feel that's the best Grandmaster of the three of them. The Spear, the Axe and the Dagger. Because you gain not only two additional attacks, so any blocks, mo any more blocks might be skipped <laughs> or basically bypassed for the bigger hitters 
But any um, but basically, she gains what? One hundred and seventy-eight damage at max. That's a lot more than these two. So Tina, who was hitting fairly hard anyway, just with her Grandmaster actually gains a whole lot more. And Shayla, finally. She had pretty much everything else is the same, except for her light skill uh, skill on the magic powers it's now 6.7 she had before uh, 4.5 she has gained 2.2 so 220 percent which puts uh, celestial armor up to 301 which is um, quite a lot What does it re uh, her calculation is actually a little bit simpler I think I think it was uh, well slightly more no. uh, basically what a grandmaster gave her was an additional five percent for each skill level she was getting what 40 she has 44 levels so she's gained 220 percent that is exactly the uh, the difference that has been added 200 uh, 2.2 uh, 220% so she has basically gained an additional 50% on her magic power almost so the two big winners of the grandmaster are Tina because she gains a whole lot of damage and Shayla because she gains comparatively more for her Grandmaster than Iris or Ray would. The calculation for, uh, for the magic power I'll put up in the side here during this uh, so you'll be able to see it but uh, it's very similar uh, the base of a hundred magic times two and then add in the calculation for your skill which in this case would be for my case would be 43 times 10 so 430 sorry 400 440 yeah i thought i was a bit off there but yeah so really Grandmasters and the promotions don't give you as much as you might think. Yes, they are improvements. Yes, they are substantial in some ways compared to what you're building uh, and what I was before. But really, they're not that necessary the skills however I would say definitely are at least a couple of them are worth it uh, mandate of heaven is doing additional at least with my team additional uh, damage with their, uh, their weapons the normal attacks because basically everything especially on using that with Tina seven attack extras with up to 67 light damage yes please uh, on that's on each strike uh, that is actually fairly nice for my team lay on hands restores the health of all party members to full for all mana uh, Considering I have Hill Party, which does three quarters for 35 mana, I'd rather Hill Party than Lay on Hands. But Mandate of Heaven is the big winner here. 
if I got that during my fights down in Kafal, up against all the dark creatures, that would have pretty much... I might well have actually been able to defeat... Uh, Erebus straight up because he does not like light magic Tina pretty much gets the majority of what she uh, of her of her best stuff uh, through that actual Grandmaster her normal thing if my mouse doesn't stop working Uh, is point blank shot. Perform the ranged attack against all enemies in front of the party. I haven't been focusing on ranged attacks the entire game, and so that pretty much is pointless. I was very rarely hitting my uh, ranged attacks anyway at the end of the game. Case in point, I missed uh, Marcus. So, yeah, ranged attacks, I didn't really do anything, so that wouldn't really make a difference. And be right back, my mouse has died. <laughs> okay, working mouse. Yeah, I haven't been focusing on ranged attacks, so it doesn't really, especially in the damage front, she's got, what, um, one point in bow skill. If she was Grandmaster, I would say that's worth it. Especially since it would give an additional strike as well. But... Really... No. It's not great. Iris is sort of in the same boat. Uh, long range. Uh, increases bow attacks range, but... Um, by two, so she would gain. Uh, so she would be able to attack from seven blocks away. Uh, yeah, and the other one, scary shot, um, performs a range strike, immobilizing the target until the end of the turn. I know, I know. I want to get into melee range. I want them to come towards me. So Snary Shot doesn't really have a lot to offer me. My team is melee, uh, very, very heavily melee focused. Having them from range doesn't really, um, keeping them at range doesn't really help me. And again, has a chance to miss because ranged attack. Ray does have a fairly um, substantial couple of skills. Harpoon, um, that it, again it's a ranged attack which isn't the best. Um, but it brings, um, instead of keeping them at bay like Iris does, Harpoon brings them towards me and gets them into melee range. So it's actually quite productive to actually do that especially pulling them out of position getting a few hits in while the rest catch up and the other one is crippling trap which um, I'm not sure what this damage amount is based off of it's likely um, might score but instead of uh, it's sort of an ensnare, but uh, Crippling just uh, loses his, their uh, melee range strikes. I can't. I think this is on on a couple of uh, spells as well, but I can't remember which ones. It's probably some water spells or something like that. But the damage is fairly significant, and if we uh, put some. I've even placed it on the bar. That's what it looks like. Any the enemies that uh, walk over that will get damaged for 
265 for three, uh, to 323. That is most likely based on my score. It's n probably not done on anything else. Why? I don't see the reason why it would be based on spear. But that is a fairly significant damage. It is an opener, though. Um, I believe, unless they're on top of uh, of it, they don't do damage. And if you place it on, well, where you are, it's not really that much of a point being there. So overall, uh, Iris has probably the worst level up, and this is in the case of my own t team build up has the worst promotion and because her skills don't really gain too much and her attack damage doesn't really gain a whole lot. Ray is next because she doesn't gain a whole lot of damage but she does gain this skill which is fairly okay and Harpoon can have its uses. Tina is next because basically her Grandmaster gives the highest damage um, bonus, I feel. Her, spe her additional skills aren't really that useful, but in the concept of my team, I want the melee damage. Her getting two additional attacks for the amount of damage that was there is a very big increase. And then we get to Shayla, who I think has the best promotion and continues to build on her way of just making sh uh, enabling Tina, Iris and Ray to actually do their damage. Her light magic skill goes up significantly. An additional 50% on every single spell is not to be taken lightly. She can block more, she can heal more. At the end we I was taking a lot of damage from some normal enemies. She can do a significant amount of damage just with Radiant Weapon. And then she also gets, on top of that, Mandate of Heaven which enables Tina to do a lot of damage, Iris to do a lot of damage, and Ray to do a lot of damage extra. Just Ray with her two attacks could do an additional 120. Before resistances of course. Tina would benefit the most from it. So really, that's the Grandmasters, that's the promotions. The I'll let you go out and make your own judgments there, there to, for you to really do that yourself. I'm glad I went without them. Um, mostly because Mandate of Heaven is broken as all heck in the concept of my team. Uh, Tina, it would have been a little bit more broken as well. Iris and Ray, yeah. You're not are you? But, yeah, that's the increase I would have got. Uh, got. And a, a bit of into the calculation of how your damage actually is calculated compared to the weapon you're getting. You One additional thing though, um, in the case of might versus skill levels for your equipment, um, if we go to uh, say Yeah, we've got four might here. Yeah. Looking back, I would much prefer this to be skill points. So, say of the uh, of the stabber. Why? Um, might increases damage by two percent for each point. So that's two point uh, two percent. Uh, for one, uh, for one might. Skill level. If you're doing, just say, a normal 
run with Grandmaster gives you 8% for one level. So this is this is might this is dagger skill both give four this ring gives so much more to make it equivalent at least in the case of a dagger you with dagger being four percent sorry um yeah daggers four percent and the every other weapon is six uh, is eight percent on the uh Grandmaster. Uh, to make it equivalent for a dagger, f to reach, uh, say, one point until uh, of the st uh, of the dagger skill, you need two might. To reach. For the uh, for the sake of a sword, spear, axe, ma uh, mace, you need four points of might for each one point of your skill, of your weapon skill. So, if you are looking to increase your damage, and you have the choice between something of might or something of skill level. Go for the skill level always. Because it will give you more attack damage overall. You can see just by oh, the calculations that I did earlier that that is the case. Of course, I can't actually go back and change all that, but if you are looking into this just to as as a sort of guide on where best to place your uh, your points, should they be, are you trying to decide between something of the stab or something of might or something of the crusher or something of might, go for something that gives the skill points you'll get the, the most benefit. But I just wanted to clarify those few things. Uh, that overall promotions are good, but they don't break it. They don't break the game. Except when you're using Mandate of Heaven. Uh, I'm very glad that I went through this without having to use it because it gave me the opportunity to see this for certain. I had a feeling they weren't that great. I thought they were a lot better than they were. But still not great. But I'm glad I've got clarification now. So that is the end of Might and Magic 10 Legacy. I hope you've enjoyed it and next time something very different. Until then, have a wonderful day, have lots of fun, goodbye.